Hey, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today I felt like doing a little bit of paper negative photography here in my little office slash studio. And I set up a still life scene of this little decoy duck sitting on my little table, and I have my little video light set up just to illuminate it. Now, for photographing this scene, I wanted to try my hand at paper negatives, which I haven't worked with in a while because recently I've been using mainly Harman direct positive paper. But um, the paper negatives I have been traditionally using are glossy paper negatives, so they're very shiny when you look at them under, under direct lights. And one of the things that I've played around with in the past was taking a paper negative, taking it out into a scene, it could be a landscape or still life, photographing the paper negative with a digital camera and then taking the digital file and inverting the tones in Photoshop so that the image of the paper negative in the digital photograph is now a positive image and the surrounding uh, background of that scene is a negative and it's a if it's a color scene the black and white print will be fairly neutrally black and white but the colored background will be those inverted colors you see with uh, uh, with negative color film. Um, it's an interesting effect and it's an interesting idea for um, creating a positive image that's derived from silver gelatin black and white paper but is done <laughs> in a unique way and gives a unique look to it. Um, so today I was wanting to also work with a different finish of paper because when you rephotograph these paper negatives if they happen to be glossy paper it's really easy to get a glare on that paper it's like holding up a sheet of glass and whatever's behind you is going to get reflected in that paper so I dug through my darkroom my old drawers of old photo paper and I came up with some Ilford multi-grade resin coated warm tone uh, satin or luster finish paper. So this is paper that uh, is not glossy and I wanted to try my hand at it. Now the difference between that paper and for instance uh, the kind of paper that I normally use, the Arista Grade 2, is the Arista paper is fixed contrast of grade 2 whereas the Ilford is a multi-grade and so its contrast is sensitive to the color of light. The more bluish the light the higher the contrast. So I went ahead and loaded, uh, I, I have, this paper was in 8x10 size, so I cut it into four pieces, loaded up two sheet film holders with the four negatives. Um, I haven't used this paper before as a paper negative, so I had to do a few tests. And I initially did some tests with the Gaussian uh, Lunapro F meter. I did an ISO 3 and an ISO 6 test. They both came out grossly underexposed, like hardly any, uh, any exposure at all. So then I took the Seconic meter and re-metered the scene with the Seconic and it suggested instead of a quarter second and a half second exposure at f5.6, it suggested two seconds and four seconds. <laughs> so uh, apparently my uh, Gaussian Luna Pro F is, it has a problem in, with these lower light levels. So um, anyways, so I went and did the two exposures and um, I developed them in my rotary processing tank on, in the kitchen with my little homemade rotary base and using 100 milliliters of Ilford Universal Paper Developer diluted 1 plus 15 for about three minutes. And the nice thing about the resin coated paper is it dries, it rinses and dries real quick. So Okay, well here's my setup for this little portrait session. I have my little table that I do these videos on and I have my video lights which are little $8 hardware store reflectors with um, daylight balanced LED light bulbs and some uh, gauzy landscaping fabric as a diffuser and they're just clipped on with bulldog clips. These are my poor man's video lights. I have the little subject for the portrait, the little duck decoy, and then I have my speed graphic on the tripod, and I'm using the Fujinon 135F 5.6 lens with a shutter release cable, and I'm going to keep the lens at um, F 5.6 right here, and I will be varying the shutter speed for the exposure. Let me open the lens here, and you can maybe see it. 
There it goes. Maybe the camera will focus on the ground glass, but there's the there is the upside down duck in the viewfinder. Now I'm going to be using a uh, several different meters just for testing. The first one is my old Gossen Luna Pro F. This has been a pretty sensitive meter over the years, although I got to be honest, I have had it repaired several times at Quality Light Metric in uh, California in Hollywood. Um, but I also have this newer light meter, the Siconic L308 SU, and while the Luna Pro F has an analog dial and enables you to extrapolate between readings, between your f-stops, the um, Siconic has just a digital uh, readout and gives you whole increments of f-stops with variable increments of shutter speeds for whatever ISO you choose. So. I did a few tests with this and I discovered that the Siconic in these kind of low light levels is a little bit more accurate, which kind of surprised me. And so for this paper negative test, I uh, ended up choosing ISO 3, which is the, the lowest ISO, don't know if my camera is going to see that, the lowest ISO that the Siconic goes down to is ISO 3. Whereas the uh, Luna Pro F, it'll go all the way down to ISO uh, under 1, ISO 0.6. So to do the uh, incident reading, of course, you hold the meter over uh, your subject, point it back at the camera, push the button, and then for the reflected reading, you slide the dome away and you point the sensor at the subject, making sure you don't shade uh, the subject with the meter itself. Well, the reflected reading was two seconds at f5.6. The incident reading, if you take the f-stop down up to 5.6, is four seconds. So I used those two exposures. I made one of each. So another one of my goals today in doing this uh, paper negative still life was I wanted to practice not only using um, a different kind of photo paper, I wanted to use it under artificial lighting also, but I also wanted to play around with uh, re-photographing the paper negative with a simple digital camera and then inverting the tones in a simple app on my iPad called FilterStorm and then mailing that uh, image to my Flickr stream from where on the internet I can actually uh, share it with a lot of different people on in different uh, forms of social media. So um, one of the being is how the goal of that was to re-photograph it the glare that you would normally get when trying to re-photograph with a camera, a glossy paper negative, is eliminated by using this luster or matte finish uh, paper negative material. Now, the matte finish paper isn't quite as sharp, so if you were doing like a um, a contact print on silver paper, you would notice that uh, it wouldn't be quite as sharp as a glossy, but for the purposes of re-photographing it and sharing it, you won't have the, the shine of the sky or whatever background light uh, fogging the, sh the, the image on the paper from the shininess of the surface. Okay, this is the paper negative that was exposed for four seconds at f5.6, and I used the bulb mode on the Fuji shutter with the shutter release cable. Um, so this is the, the gray surface of that table. These are the dark blue curtains that basically have no exposure at all. They're dark. And um, so the highlights have a shine on them. And so you can see these dark spots on the wing and on the, underneath the neck of the bird. There's kind of a shininess to it. Uh, and the grays look very nice. Um, and there's quite a bit of detail. And I like the detail in the face, the eyes, the detail around the eyes and the bill of the duck. So. I thought it came out quite nice, and, and you can of course see the shadow of the uh, decoy on the uh, surface there, the textured carpet table. So I took a still photo of this uh, negative sitting, resting against uh, the decoy, and I inverted it in, uh, in post, and I'll show you what, I'll show you that photo right now.
And oh, by the way, just a little uh, side note, uh, since we're talking about traditional black and white materials, but this envelope that I have my paper negative in is a material called glassine, and it's kind of a wax paper. And it was the traditional way of preserving negatives, and you can still get these glassine envelopes. And the thing I like about glassine envelopes is, as, com as compared to plastic film, plastic film, when you pull a negative in or out, at the microscopic or atomic level, you're stripping off electrons off those long chain polymers of plastic and it ionizes the plastic and creates static electricity. And you're, it'll attract dust like crazy plastic sleeves do. But the glassine envelopes uh, just don't, don't create any static. And so I think they're wonderful for putting film in. So if you get a chance to look up some glassine envelopes, try to buy some of these. These are great. And they also make them sleeves for 35 millimeter and, and 120 film as well as 4x5. So what I did in Filter Storm to uh, invert the image into a positive, and you can do this in any kind of a photography uh, app that has the curves tool. So in your curves tool, if you open up your file in your curves tool, you're going to have this basically this straight line kind of a feature. And what you want to do in curves is you want to put a point up here at the highlights and you want to drag the highlights all the way down here so it'll temporarily kind of look like that. And then you want to put another point at the shadows and drag the shadows all the way up here and what you'll end up with is the curve instead of sloping upwards to the right it slopes up upwards to the left and what you've just basically done is inverted the tones making the dark tones light and the light tones dark. And this works in apps like uh, filter storm and it works in Photoshop and it works in a lot of many other uh, raw developers that I've tried also. So give that a try and that's a really easy way to invert an image without having to use the full-blown Photoshop. Well this was my uh, little experience today. I did several things. I experimented with this new to me luster finish multi-grade contrast paper as a paper negative enabling me to do these digital inversions of the paper negative set in a, a another scene and which enables me to kind of uh, do something different with paper negatives um, instead of simply scanning or rephotographing them in order to produce a positive image or the more traditional way of contact printing instead of doing that I'm setting the negative inside of another scene and inverting the entire scene so the paper negative becomes the reality, the positive image, and the whole external scene becomes a negative of its own kind. So I think that's a kind of an interesting idea. And using the medium of a digital camera, importing the file to like a tablet device like my iOS devices, using an app like FilterStorm, it makes it pretty easy to do the inversion and to share it onto a social media platform where you can then distribute it elsewhere. And uh, so uh, I hope you guys got a little benefit out of this and found that it's possible to use these traditional forms and alternative forms of silver gelatin media with a digital workflow, kind of a hybrid workflow, in order to find new ways of expressing yourself creatively. And until next time, you guys have a great day.